friend of mine reminded me of a story about a young boy in India. Now in India, the Catholic Church has a pretty decent presence. And there are a number of parishes and a number of schools that are run by the church. And interestingly enough, most of the kids that attend those Catholic schools are not Catholic, are not even Christian. Many of them belong to the Hindu tradition, the Hindu faith, as one might expect. And so in religion class, one of the boys, a Hindu, listens to the priest teach the catechism and was hearing about Jesus and what Jesus was all about. And the priest would teach him about the Beatitudes and about, you know, his birth in Bethlehem and the things that he taught and the good news that he proclaimed and some of the miracles that he worked. And it really got this boy thinking. He was intrigued about what he had, what he heard. And so he asked the priest, I want to know more about Jesus. How do I do that? And so the priest handed him a copy of one of the Gospels. He said, here, take this home this weekend and read this, and you'll get to know Jesus a little better. So when he came back that following Monday, the little boy was furious. He was angry. And he came up to that priest when the priest came into the classroom, and he said to him, is it true? And the priest looked at him and said, what do you mean? What is what true? Is it true? Did he rise from the dead? And the priest looked at him and said, oh yes, he rose from the dead. And the boy just looked at him and said, well, why didn't you start with that? <laughs> why didn't you start with that? And in fact, that is what gives our faith all of its meaning. Because without the resurrection from the dead, as St. Paul reminds us, the faith is meaningless. The baptism we receive is meaningless. The Jesus and everything he did, meaningless. He would just be another great teacher, a guru. He would be like uh, a Buddha, or like an enlightened one of the Eastern mystical religions. He would be like any other teacher, any other faith leader, a prophet, maybe. But he rose from the dead, and that changes everything. He's not just some guy offering a particular way. He's not some guy who's trying to, to form us and give us a code of ethics or morals. All of Jesus' teachings are fine and good, but they don't do anything for us unless we have the resurrection. Our faith is built. It starts with the resurrection. And it's living in the resurrection that gives us life. Our faith is not about a bunch of teachings. Our faith is about being saved about being saved by Jesus' death and resurrection, a personal salvation that you and I encounter in the waters of baptism. We are saved by Jesus Christ, by his cross, by his resurrection. It all starts there. And then the good news, and the code of ethics that Christ gives us, and the teachings that he lays out, then those help us to live our life as a resurrected person, to live our life as Jesus would live our life. But without the resurrection, those things are meaningless. It's the resurrection that changes everything. And it's the resurrection that brings us here today. We celebrate the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. And I know that's hard to grasp sometimes, to grasp that a man got up out of his tomb and walked out that it seems almost unbelievable. And I think that's why the, the, the writers of the scriptures take such pains to point out the details of that story. Because as we hear the gospel, when the apostles go into that tomb and they look around, they find the cloth that covered the body, and they find the cloth that covered the head, neatly rolled up and set aside. Had Jesus' body been stolen 
by those who wanted to take him from his disciples, they would not have had such great care. They wouldn't have unwrapped the body. They wouldn't have untied the burial cloth. They certainly would not have folded them up and laid them to the side neatly. They would have taken the body in its wrappings and gone. It's important that the apostles saw the wrappings laying there because they knew that this wasn't a sealing of the body, but that Jesus rose from the dead, that he got up and he walked out of there on his own accord. But they didn't see it. They didn't see it because the time in which this happened was so short. Remember, when he was taken down from the cross, they had to hurry because the sun was setting. And they had the Passover, the, the, the Sabbath would be beginning. And they couldn't work on the dead body during the Sabbath, the day of rest. So they had to quickly put him in the tomb before the day ended. And then, by the time past the, the, the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene arrives at the tomb while it is still dark. Before the sun has come up on this day. And there were guards close to and even before the sun rose, he was gone. He was gone. They didn't give a very long window for anybody to do what we might think they did, steal the body. Jesus, sometime in the darkness of that night, rose from the dead. And that empty tomb proclaimed his resurrection. And that's where it all began. And whenever I doubt the resurrection, whenever I wonder if Jesus truly rose from the dead, I go back and I rely on the faith of those apostles. I rely on what they saw. Because if you think about it, those apostles had no motivation anymore to preach the resurrection. First of all, most of the people who followed Jesus in the crowd had already turned against him by this time. The city of Jerusalem didn't want anything to do with him, failing as their political messiah. They were people that were now outcasts. What would have motivated them now to preach his resurrection? There was nothing that they would have gained. They couldn't even imagine themselves as tele-evangelists raking in the money. That was not something that they would be able to do because the message they were preaching was so hated. This man was so hated. They knew that if they continued his teaching, they would be next on the chopping block. They would die. And in fact, all of them did, except for John. All of them died by preaching this message. And yet, they continued to preach it. <coughs> so I have to ask myself, why? Why would they do that? But that they had an encounter with the risen one. That not only did they see that empty tomb, but they met Jesus throughout this blessed season. They met him and conversed with him. They saw the risen Lord. They experienced him. And that gave them the courage enough to say, he is risen from the dead. They were different people. They were different people because of what they experienced. And now they live their life as different people by what they have experienced. The resurrection is where it all begins. But they didn't understand it. We hear today that they went into the tomb and it says the beloved disciple walked in. He looked around. He believed. But he didn't understand. He believed. But he didn't understand. How many times do we do just the opposite? I don't understand, and so I withhold belief. I don't understand, and so I doubt. I don't understand, and so I say it's wrong. How many times do we approach that? But the Beloved shows us to go into the tomb, even without fully understanding, and beginning there with faith. And living that life of faith, our whole lives are changed. They become something new. They become something different. The world was changed because those apostles went out and preached the resurrection. And so now we have to do that too. 
You and I have to be changed because of the resurrection. You and I live in this world as different people now. And, and those who meet us need to know that. It shouldn't take someone very long to figure out you believe in the resurrection and you believe in Jesus Christ. They should know by the way we live, by the way we act, by what we are willing to do and what we are not willing to do, by what we will not put in front of Jesus Christ and what we will not let go in front of our faith. Because we believe he rose from the dead. And that is a light of comfort that fills the emptiness of people who are looking for something in the world today. I believe Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And I believe his apostles saw that and that they preached that message. And that others also encountered that. And I believe that that church that he established continues to exist in this church. And I believe that the Holy Spirit is at work, as Jesus promised, to keep her faithful to his teaching. The church's teachings are true. And if we doubt any one of them, we doubt Jesus Christ. We doubt the resurrection. The resurrection changes everything. And we may not understand it all, but we give ourselves in faith. And we change the world. This is where we start. I know sometimes we feel that we have to argue the faith. We have to convince people of the faith, especially if they attack it or come at it from a different angle, that we have to stand up for it. And while that's right and good, it's not the first thing we have to do. The first thing we have to do is proclaim the resurrection. Why do you believe in the first place? Why are we still Catholic? Because I believe Jesus rose from the dead, founded this church, promised to be with it until he comes again. And I have no doubt in its veracity and its truth. That gives me hope, and it gives meaning to my life. The resurrection is where it begins. And because of that, your life now has no end.